Hi, I've done many videos on my home solar power systems, plural, because I have more than one. Um, and I'll link in those videos if you haven't seen them. One of the common questions I get asked is why I haven't added a battery to my system. Or if I do, is it financially viable? Is it worth actually doing? So that's what I'm going to look in this video. I'm going to go through the numbers and this is just for my installation, okay? This is for my own use. Everyone's circumstances are different. So if you're going to think about the viability of a batter home storage battery uh, solution and solar solution for your own home, then you need to take into account your own circumstances. So it varies a lot and I've got kind of a weird set up. So I've pulled the numbers from my energy bills for the last, last four quarters and that's all we need. Even though I've got three different monitoring solutions, uh, the ways to actually extract data, you know, how much energy I'm producing, how much I'm consuming and exporting. At the end of the day, and when you're doing a financial calculation like this, all that matters is your energy bill. And I'm currently exporting any excess energy which we don't use to the grid and getting a paid a pittance for it. I'm getting paid about 7.6 cents per kilowatt hour which is ridiculous but anyway that's what it's like here there was even talk about them actually trying to charge us to actually export energy to the grid insane anyway so we don't need all of that data that i've gathered and got available to me i just need the bills how much i'm exporting to the grid and how much i'm consuming from the grid so what i've got here is for each quarter uh in this particular case 91 days we've got the amount of energy which i sold back to the grid so i'm exporting that's what sold means i'm exporting back to the grid at 7.9 cents per kilowatt hour getting paid an absolute pittance for it so is it better to actually store all of the excess energy um, and then reuse it at uh, night when it's not shining. And then I've got another figure here, which is the amount of energy that I used from the grid. So this is what I'm using at night, uh, basically, because during the day, our, the home solar uh, arrays that I've got, the three kilowatt um, string one plus the five kilowatt end phase system, it more than covers our daily use and we even charge our EV with it, our 2020 Ionic EV, more than enough, usually during the day to charge that. So we've effectively got a solar power powered car. So that excess sold energy that I'm selling back to the grid, that's the excess energy after we've actually consumed whatever it is. So we've been charging the EV during the day. We, you know, Mrs. EV blog works at home and, uh, a lot during the day. We do a lot of things during the day when the solar's out and we've timed some of our appliances to come on to, to use energy during the day and stuff like that to help out. So we're still exporting like uh, quite significant amounts of energy, actually more than what we're using. Autumn, April to June, we've got the same figures here. You can see that we're basically exporting uh, quite a lot uh, less there and we're using a bit more here. And then in winter um, is our actually our peak energy usage because our home's reasonably thermally efficient. So in summer, we, we do cool it down a bit. We use the air cons. We've actually got four air conditioning uh, systems. We do cool it down a bit, but, no, but we don't use nearly as much energy as we use uh, to keep warm in uh, winter time. So our peak energy usage is winter. And just as an aside, all of our hot water is currently gas, but we are thinking about in the future installing a uh, heat pump electric system for that. So our uh, consumption, our daily consumption will increase if we install, if we, uh, you know, heat up our water with a heat pump electricity system. You know, but once again, this will depend on you know, if we've had a particularly bad uh, summer. We actually have uh, this year. We like in terms of like just overcast and rain and everything, very rainy overcast uh, summer. So all these numbers sort of like fluctuate, but you know, we can only go with the numbers that we've got. And you can see that we exported the most amount of energy actually during spring, 2239 kilowatt hours uh, that we sold back to the grid at an absolute pittance. And we could have used that. And here's the thing. During each one of these quarters, look at this excess energy. 1793 could have easily offset the 1,021 kilowatt hours that we actually use pulled from the grid. And same down here in spring, more than double uh, that we actually just sent back to the grid than we pulled back from the grid. So if we had a battery storage system in summer and spring, it looks like that we'd be 100% 
uh, grid independent. In fact, we'd probably even sell back a little bit of excess power. But you can see here that during autumn and uh, winter, uh, the amount that we fed back to the grid, i.e. the excess that we had, doesn't quite account for the uh, amount of energy that we pulled back. And same here, similar sort of uh, ratio there. So not quite, so only about half a year could we be uh, actually grid independent. So assuming that a battery system can roughly offset uh, the amount of energy that we're uh, consuming from the grid, then uh, we can calculate. So 1,021 kilowatt hours divided by 91 days is 11.2 kilowatt hours per day that we're actually buying from the grid. And that costs us uh, basically $3.38 per day at, uh, I'm paying about 30 cents per kilowatt hour currently. We Our base rate's about 25 cents per kilowatt hour here. I'm on a fixed rate, by the way. I'm not on a uh, peak and off-peak variable rate. Don't have one of those smart, newfangled smart meters. So we're on a fixed rate. Um, so it's about 25 cents base rate, plus we pay an additional 5 cents for 100% new infrastructure green energy. And we've been paying that for like 18, 20 years, something like that. And you can go through the same calculation here for autumn, winter, and spring, 435. We're a peak in, in uh, winter here, we'd be paying about $6 a day. So we can work that, you know, an average of $4.30 per day average uh, is, you know, we're paying about $1,569 per year. So if we installed a battery system that roughly offsetted all of our usage here, and yes, for some seasons we can't uh, offset it here quite like fully, but other seasons we can and export. And let's just say it all comes out of the wash that we can basically install a battery that can offset all of the all of our energy requirements. So what budget do we have? Well, uh, $15.69 uh, dollars per year that we're currently paying, if we invested that buying a battery up front now, that could offset all of that. So we effectively would, our bill would effectively drop to zero, you know, on average over the year, then uh, given at least a 10 year uh, operational battery life, then, you know, we've got basically 15,000, over $15,000 to spend on a battery solution. So you can get a pretty decent battery solution for 15K, Aussie that is. But of course I wouldn't really like to pay this back off over 10 years. I wanted to pay it off in like half that if, if possible, like five years. So then I can get like potentially if it lasts, it should last at least 10 years. In fact, a lot of the batteries have like a 10 year plus uh, warranty on them. It de but we'll talk about it depends on you, how you actually use them as well, how you cycle them, the load that you put on them, we'll go into that in a minute. But 15K budget, feel comfortable spending about half that, say seven and a half thousand dollars on a battery solution. So what size battery? Do we need? Well, it actually popped out of our uh, numbers up here. 11 uh, you know, kilowatt hours, 14 kilowatt hours, 20 kilowatt hours, 11 kilowatt hours down here uh, per day is what we're pulling back from the grid. So, you know, hopefully if we can extract that amount of power during the day, once again, just all this is all on average. If you have a bad day, you're going to be drawn from the grid. You're not going to store enough energy to use at night for the whole day, etc. And it depends on what you're doing. Some days we use three times the energy that we'll use the day before. It looks like we at least need a 10 kilowatt hour battery for this thing. Maybe a 15 kilowatt hour. You know, it, it might be overkill to put in like a 20 kilowatt hour battery like for your worst uh, case season here you could but you're paying a lot more upfront cost uh, for that thing so anyway I'm just going to standardize here on a on a 10 kilowatt hour pack um, just for pricing purposes so this is by no means a comprehensive list of battery uh, solutions. I've just got, I just picked four of them here um, just for, you know, to run some numbers. Basically, uh, we've got the Tesla, of course. I wouldn't uh, use, uh, wouldn't choose Tesla myself, but I'm going to add it here because it's the big name in the industry. Everyone knows it. And if I didn't put it in, everyone would comment down below. Um, is it still lithium? Um, have they moved to lithium ion phosphate? I don't know. I'd want a lithium ion phosphate uh, solution, not a uh, standard lithium ion solution. Anyway, um, it costs about, it's about $13,000 at least uh, to install a uh, system here, which I believe is currently 13 kilowatt hours. So it works out to about 10,000 Aussie bucks per 10 kilowatt hours. Now, end phase, because I've got a five kilowatt end phase system here, I could, obviously one of my options is to install 
an Enphase uh, battery. They've got the new IQ system uh, that's coming out shortly. Now, I called them up today and I could not extract a price from them. Um, so they just, no, they wouldn't even ballpark it. Um, so, you know, but it's a premium solution. So I, I'd say it's probably on par with the Tesla here. So I put question marks, but it's going to be a reasonably expensive uh, solution and it uses the IQ8 micro inverters in there and it's, you know, they're a dual directional thing. And anyway, it would be a, uh, you know, fairly expensive solution. And both of those, these are what's uh, referred to as an AC battery and basically that does uh, powers your whole house it does whole house uh, backup essentially so you know and that requires additional um, installation and requirements uh, legal requirements and everything for wiring it in it also requires maybe additional uh, boxes and transfer switches and stuff like that but it will basically give you an entire house backup if the power fails then it's actually wired basically your entire house is is wired on the output side of the battery uh, inverter system. So it just continues to power your entire house. Now, let's look at, of course, I've talked about, because I've got two different systems here, and you know, once again, all this talk is like specifically to my particular installation, which is a bit oddball because I've got two different uh, systems. I've got three different monitoring solutions. We've got uh, curveballs being thrown in that we're going to extend our house and part of and the end phase, well actually both systems are currently coming down. I'm thinking about adding a, a new four panel smaller uh, system uh, to go onto the string. I've got many different weird and wonderful requirements but the other ones would be a hybrid string inverter system. So I replace my existing three kilowatt Sunny Boy inverter with a five or six, say, uh, kilowatt uh, hybrid inverter, which then you can hook a battery onto the hybrid inverter, and then during the day it will store any excess power that you don't use uh, to the battery, and then at night it'll just feed that back in uh, to the grid. I wouldn't have to, I just simply change the current box I've got at the moment, I wouldn't have to change the wiring on my fuse box or anything, wouldn't have to install anything in additional, So, but I'd have to buy a new hybrid uh, string inverter to do this. Now the thing about these is that the basic installation of, of a hybrid uh, string inverter, they only provide essentially emergency power if the power fails. So they give you like an additional uh, mains outlet that is still active if the grid goes down and then it can store energy in the battery during the day and you can continue to operate independently but it doesn't power your whole house. It's not integrated with the wiring of your existing house. So you've only got like an emergency power output. You can power your fridges and freezers and you know a laptop or two or you know and some emergency light. So it's a bit of a more manual uh, system and for those who ask the power here in Sydney is incredibly reliable. I've lived here all my life. My memory is that the biggest blackout we've had is probably five or six hours. That's it, like over my entire lifetime of living in Sydney here. Not to say it can't happen, but you know, it's not something that I plan for. So I would be happy personally with a hybrid string inverter with just an emergency power output. If the brown stuff does hit the fan, we can at least keep the fridges and freezers and lights running. So what could I uh, do with that? Well, uh, BYD, I like the look of their um, LVS uh, series batteries. They're, they're like stackable in four kilowatt hour increments. So four, eight, 16, and you just physically stack them as high as you want. Well, there is a limit, I think 22 kilowatt hours or something like that. They're currently priced at about, I think about 7.5K uh, Aussie for 10 kilowatt uh, hours, even though you can't buy exactly 10. But now pretty much the bottom of the range pricing I could find here in Australia is uh, Green Bank, and they vary anywhere from 4K to 6K per 10 kilowatt hours. So, you know, like under half of what a uh, Tesla or an Enphase, uh, you know, solution would cost or one of the bigger ones. And there's LG Chem as well. Uh, did they go under with LG? I'm not sure. <laughs> the LG Solar went bust, by the way. Um, if you didn't know, breaking news from like a year ago, uh, yeah, they actually, so all my LG solar panels that I've got on my roof, they're out of warranty now. Eh, but she'll be right. They'll just keep working for another 10, 15 years easy. Actually, uh, Green Bank even have a 15 kilowatt hour battery for only 5K Aussie. Um, so yeah, I got to check details on that. You know, there's various different warranties and they've got different, in fact, the 10 kilowatt hour batteries that they have, they have five different types. So it's just 
like it, it's nuts. I haven't wrapped my head around it all yet. Plus I need that hybrid string inverter. That might be another couple of, you know, 2K there, 1500 to 2K. So I only need like a five, uh, five kilowatt hour jobby or something like that. That'd do the trick. So bottom of the range pricing, I could actually get away with half of that price I talked about, half of that $15,000 budget for about seven and a half K, I could actually install a 10 to 15 kilowatt hour battery. And that would like do actually three seasons. That would, cater, like if I had say a 15 kilowatt hour battery, that would actually cater for three of my seasons. Only during uh, winter here would we um, you know, be pulling maybe a little bit of excess energy. And there's tons of system installation and compatibility details. You can go in with battery solutions and hybrid string inverters. Suffice it to say, like these BYD batteries, they'll only work with certain brands of uh, string inverters. You know, you might get a Fronius, you might get a uh, SunGrow, you might get a Sunny Boy. Then other brands of hybrid inverters like uh, DI, for example. One of my uh, viewers actually put me on uh, to those and apparently I, I could in theory, apparently, they've got like a generator um, input and you could actually feed the five kilowatt end phase micro inverters into the hybrid string inverter. So that sounds really cool. And of course, with my weird ass system, here's a problem which I'm, you know, pretty much stuck with. If I use this hybrid string inverter system here, I can't extract all of the solar excess solar energy during the day because I've got a five kilowatt end phase micro inverter system which is totally separate to what these hybrid string inverters would only work with my three kilowatt string here plus maybe an additional 1.7 or 1.8 kilowatts that I plan uh, on installing in a more favorable location. The three kilowatt string inverter I've got at the moment, if you see my other videos, the location that's very poor on the uh, east southeast side of my roof so it's actually <laughs> it's about as bad as it gets but it still does give me usable you know decent amount of usable energy it's already paid for itself i've done a payback video on that so it's effectively uh free but, uh, yeah if i use a hybrid string inverter um one that doesn't have a generator input then i can't uh feed my end phase system into that so my end phase system will not if there's any excess power from the end phase it'll either i use it during the day or I lose it. That is where an AC battery would be better because it doesn't matter. I could have five different independent solar systems. It doesn't matter. They're all essentially, at the end of the day, they're all feeding onto the grid at the same point. So an AC battery simply just takes all the uh, you know energy that you're generating from your solar and uh, using that excess and then can store it in the battery. But the hybrid string inverter right off the bat would only work with the existing string system that I've got. So I'd replace my three kilowatt Sunny Boy and that Sunny Boy system's still going strong. I'd probably sell that, get a bit of coin back after that as well, which helps pay for a hybrid uh, string inverter here. But now to throw another curveball into this, you can't just buy a battery and be done with it. Um, if you, if you want to do it properly, you have to talk about, are you absolutely penny pitching? Do you want to service this battery? If so, you want one that has serviceable, you know, batteries over the lifespan of this thing in 10, 15 years, do you want to replace place the individual cells, you know, are you handy? Do you want to do that? And this is why, uh, you know, most suppliers will actually give you, uh, Tesla don't, they've just got like one size uh, fits all kind of thing and so do Enphase, I think, but ones like BYD and these green Aussie Green Bank ones and other uh, brands, they will actually provide you with different types, not, not they're the same physical type, they might be lithium ion phosphate, but they might use different uh, size cells and different, uh, you know, arrangements and things like that to provide different power output capabilities and that's something you have to factor in like do you want 100 percent cycle these batteries every day if so that's going to lower the uh, lifespan what's your peak power you know at night time that you might be uh, taking from these things then you know you've got to factor all that sort of stuff in um, to your battery uh, choice over here and there's a whole bunch of technical detail you could go into there and you can do that until the cows come home it's quite complex but just know that there are different battery solutions uh, like in terms of uh, peak power and serviceability and other uh, factors that need to be taken into account so to answer the question is it financially viable for me to add a home storage battery solution yeah, it looks like it is. I think I'm going to go ahead with this. And even if it did only pay for itself over 10 years, for example, at least you've got that during the day and you get the warm fuzzy knowing that, oh, I'm charging my, I can charge my EV at night now using some power that is excess power that I store during the day. It gives you that warm fuzzy and it also gives you that uh, emergency power 
back up as well, just in case the grid goes down. So I can probably afford to spend, you know, at least seven or eight K on a home battery storage solution and it looks like it's gonna pay for itself. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Everyone will have their own opinion on this. And once again, my system is quite complex. Yeah, I could go several different ways and there's pros and cons of both ways. So, you know, I shouldn't even even talked about that in this video, but you know. Yeah. And check out my Odyssey channel. I've put some exclusive videos over there as well. Not solar related, but there are some exclusive videos in that over there. Check those out. Got almost 70,000 subscribers on Odyssey. And thanks to all my patrons who uh, support and pay for whatever it is I do here. Catch you next time. Hello.